Welcome back to What Arty Nibs with General Disturbance. This is an IS-3, it's a tier 8 Soviet heavy tank and it's located on the southwest spawn of Glacier and it's under the command of Jason Thomas. Now he's from What Uni 3 which is uh, the old name for what, what used to be Havoc 2, happens to be my clan actually and uh, he's gonna take the uh, IS-3, it's not too fully upgraded Still got the uh, stock engine, I believe, and hasn't got the top gun. Now, the IS-3, oh, that was a bit of a bang. I think that uh, T-34 was a bit too, uh, bit too eager to go away. Oh, is he, what's he doing? Oh, he's firing a warning shot at that T-34. That's a bit naughty. Shouldn't do that, that might start a war between two teammates but anyway this is the IS-3 it's part of the IS series of tanks the Josef Stalin tanks and it's the first one with a pink nose famous for that pink nose they've started building them in May 1945 uh, just after the war had ended but uh, they actually took part in the victory parade in uh, Berlin now it's got a famous cast turret that looks a bit like a, a saucepan and it's incredibly tough because it's got uh, virtually continuous angles all the way round which make it very easy to deflect shots plus of course that peaked or uh, piked nose enables the shell to deflect shots from the enemy and we're coming up to the northwest corner and a T-3485 has already got there ahead of us and is now blocking our way to pull back and he's just taken a shot from the enemy. We've got a BK 3601H up ahead, tier 6 German heavy. Not really able to stand up to the 122mm gun on this particular tank. We've got an alpha damage of 390 hit points in this gun. Penetration 175mm. So it goes straight through that BK 3601 and it does. 372, that's a low roll. The Napine Tiger just around the corner. Now that's a derivative of the Wizzy 111 one. Or Wizzy 111 I should say. So we don't really want to engage him just yet because he's got similar gun to us and the ability to do a lot of damage. Oh, it looks like we tracked that BK. Or was it the Black Prince? No, I think it was the Black Prince we tracked and he's just taken some damage so we picked up some damage assistance. Try another bat shot in but I think we bounced it. Black Prince bounces off us. You can see the alpha damage of the Black Prince is 300, or 150 rather, and the VK is less, 135. Misses that round on the 36. We've got an OI behind us. He just fired an HE round at that and took 150. Oh, there's a T-150. Put a nice round into the Black Prince. It's a low roll, but it still did some damage and it was just in the right place to do that damage. Oh, right, side scraping to avoid the Alpine and we bounced his round into the tracks. T-150 comes around the corner and we'll get a high roll but we've lost the OI behind us. He took the full force of that shot from the T-150. Okay, now Jason is going to try and pull back around the back of the OI and use him to side scrape from. Bounce the round from the Alpine Tiger. You see that 390 Alpha? Yeah, he's got the same gun as us, 122mm, it's very dangerous. I always like using the HE with that one. Okay, unfortunately, didn't get a penetration, but we did hit his tracks. And now the Black Prince is shooting us in the side, so we're going to have to side scrape against the Alpine and try and put shots into the Black Prince if we can. And we take a big hit from the Alpine, but it is a low roll. And the Black Prince has taken a round from Marty. And the T-150 keeps putting forward. Can we put a round into that Black Prince? No, we don't. We hit his tracks. And we take another round from the Alpine, but this time it goes into the tracks. The T-150 is trying to get a shot into us, bounces it. And that was a round from the RT just coming in. Alpine Tiger pulls forward. Again, he hits us in the track, but we get one back. 389. That's um, average. 10 seconds on the reload, 10 38. Oh, we did take, take damage there, 387, but we gave him uh, some damage back, 443. 
We're gonna go for his lower plate this time, see if we can get it. Oh, wait for the... Are we gonna go for the gun? Yes! But that one didn't penetrate. And we did actually get stunned by our own RT there. The M12 is just firing too close. And unfortunately, well, good, good for us. He's actually taken out the black, the black prince, so we don't have to worry about that side. But we do have to worry about the Alpine Tiger and the T150. Alpine Tiger comes forward. We can hit him now. We do. We hit his track. T150's come forward, but he's just been hit by the guy behind us. I think we got a Tiger P behind us. Alpine Tiger just ahead, side scraping nicely using that wreck. So are we, for that matter. Gonna try and get that T150, I think. Can we get a drop? Oh no, we take some damage from the Alpine Tiger. But the T150 is taken out by the Tiger P. And we're pulling back. The Tiger P's pushing forward. He's full health. He can easily do it. We need to get around this wreck now to put rounds into the side of the Alpine. Going for the weakest spot. And we take him out. 238. Good shot. But the problem is that we're the only two tanks up in the northwest corner. And the enemy does appear to have done rather well going around the perimeter. And I think the others have spotted this. We're going to probably have to go back to our own cap. Tiger P's backing away. I think he's going to turn around. Yep, Jason's turning around as well. He's going to head back. It does appear that they've managed to get around the perimeter road and they're approaching our cap area. The steel weapon Traker is the nearest one to them and he's standing at the rock in the uh, just on the ridge line on the heights trying to defend the cap. Oh, we just lost our Hummel. They managed to find the Hummel and shot him. There's the MXAC-48. It's the French tank destroyer and he's just put a round into our steer. And he's killed the steer. Oh no, he didn't kill it. It was the Borsig who did. So there's a Borsig in that area as well. Right metal Borsig weapon trigger. Gun carrier. Can't see the AMX. It is beyond our visual range. Beyond our render range, I should say. Yeah, this is going to be difficult. Ideally, what we need to do now is go along the center. There's a T-3485 been seen there. Oh, there's the AMX. It's been seen. And the strip got him. Okay. Oh, there's the T-3485. Oh, it's a different one. There's one in the center as well. The T-3485's gone down to the strip as well. Oh, there's the T-34 that was in the middle. Can we get him? Yes! It was a one-shot. So we got him and we bounced around from him as well. 85mm round just bounced off our armor. Now, is Jason going to head north? No, I think really what he ought to do is go after that Borsig. That Borsig has only got the M12 between him and the cap, so... The Tiger's going down the west side. We lost the strip. The question is, we can't see the Borsig, but the question is, will the Borsig see us before we see him? And that Borsig might have either a 128mm gun or a 15cm gun, and they can do considerable damage, in fact, far more than our alpha damage, uh, far more than our health with uh, one shot. So, um, the M12 is trying to run away. He's trying to get away from the cap, head north towards the enemy cap. He's just been hit by the enemy RT. 200 hit points. There's two enemy RT still alive, a Lorraine 15550 and a Hummel. That looked like it was a Hummel shot. There's the Borsi! It's been seen. Now, can we shoot him? Line up a shot. Oh, yes, he got him! Oh, he's on fire! And he's blown up! He's set fire to him. He gets an arse this badge. Set fire to the poor sick and blew him up. Frying tonight! Now, uh, the T-3485 is calling our RT an idiot. Well, he's not really, no. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. And he's found the Hummel. Oh, and the Hummel shotgunned him, but he killed the Hummel. He's showing some stun. That might have been the 15550, uh, though, who shot at him. But uh, he managed to dispose of the Hummel. 
So all that's left on the enemy team is the 15550. Tiger P is going up the uh, west side of the map. He's going to go up to the northwest corner. If the 15550 is going to escape, he's probably going to head west. He's fast enough. He might be able to do that. Go that way. Go around the wrecks in the northwest corner, and then approach the cap in the uh, north. If he went directly across, he might meet the IS3, and that's the last thing he wants to do. Mind you, he doesn't really want to meet the Tiger P either. So we can climb up this ridge line, see if we can find him. M12's moving up towards the cap. Tiger P's around the northwest corner. Oh, there's the rain! He's been spotted, he's in the northwest corner! He must have been hiding from the Tiger P. Or he must have come into view as he went around the outside and the Tiger P spotted him. Jason Thomas is going to head back, he's going to go over there. He's got to get down off this plateau first. The M12 is heading for the cap. Tiger P's approaching the Lorraine. This could be tense. He can't one-shot him, but... Or rather, the Lorraine can't one-shot the Tiger. Oh, and he goes down. And that's a game-winning shot. So, let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And it's an ace tanker for Jason Thomas in the IS-3. It's also his first ace tanker because we can see it's got that little banner underneath and you only get those if you get your first ace tanker. Otherwise, it's always the uh, M in a laurel. Uh, so let's have a look. He also picked up a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. An arsonist for second fire to the Rhyme Metal Borsig Waffen Traeger and seeing it burn to death. Um, a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, crew incapacitations or module damage. He got six. A Spartan medal for bouncing around when he had less than 10% of his hit points left. And that was the shot from the T-3485 which careened off his armour because it just couldn't go through. It just wouldn't get through with the angles of the armour. And he got a high calibre for dealing the most damage in the battle. And finally, he got a steel wall. He not only received at least 11 hits from the enemy, uh, but he blocked at least a 1,000 hit points of damage. And he survived the battle. And most of those shots were taken from the Alpine Tiger and the T-150 over on the uh, northwest corner of the map. So, pretty good going. Win 8 of 6056. Super unit comes standard. Let's have a look at team score. Highest damage, 3,642 hit points overall. Next highest score was the Striv S1. He managed 2,128. And uh, the Alpine Tiger on the enemy team managed 1,946. And that was probably most of the hit points yielded there were probably from Jason Thomas and the OI who came up behind him because uh, he was taken out by the Alpine Tiger. When it came to kills, it was, again, Jason Thomas who got the highest number, as well as the Striv S1. They both got three kills apiece. Then there's a whole slew of tanks who managed to get two kills. And when it came to base XP, again, Jason Thomas gets the highest amount. 1,295. That's worthy of an ace. The next highest score was the M12. He managed 843, and he's going to have to be a little more careful when he's aiming at the enemy not to stun his own teammates. So I know it can happen. I've done it myself, but uh, you don't want to stun your own teammates when he's in a side scrape with uh, enemy heavies, especially when it's one on two. Um, and then came the Striv S1. He managed 738 uh, base experience points. And the highest the enemy could get was through Alpine Tiger. He managed 477. So let's have a look at detail report. Well, he fired 18 rounds from his 122mm gun. He got 15 direct hits. He got 9 penetrations. Splash damage, no. Uh, damage of 3,642 hit points, of which 720 were at more than 300 meters. That would be the T-3485 and the Borsig. Uh, he received 20 hits from the enemy. 20! Five of them were penetrations. Most of those were from the Alpine Tiger. Uh, Fifteen were non-penetrations. Uh, those are the ones that actually either bounced off his turret or uh, bounced off the armor at the, um, into the tracks. So it shows how tough the IS-3 can be. He blocked damage of 3,210 hit points. An absolutely massive amount. He damaged six of the enemy, killed three of them, and did damage assistance of 1,154 hit points. 
on a standard account, he earned 40,203 credits. He got compensation from that M12 for 275 credits for stunning him. And that brought up a total of 40,478. And after repairs and ammunition resupply, he still took away 10,961 credits. And he received two bonds, one for the high caliber, the other for the steel wall. And he earned 1,295 base XP times four for the first uh, bat first winning battle of the weekend or of the day and that means he took away 5180 experience points from one battle alone so i'm sure he's very pleased about this because uh, jason thomas doesn't have uh, the top engine or the top gun on this is3 but he still managed to win and he still managed to get an ace tanker without them so well done jason thomas i hope you enjoyed this replay if you did please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel and hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.